Hey guys, welcome to Motoroids. I rode the F77 today and I am mighty impressed. This is one of the highest performance motorcycles that are available in India in the electric scene. But to get here has been a long journey. It's been a rather arduous journey and Neeraj Rajmohan, the founder and CTO at Ultraviolet is with me today and I'm going to harass him with a few difficult questions. And I had a conversation with him earlier also and there were some really interesting bits that he shared with me. So I'll start with this association that you guys are projecting with a stealth aircraft. So right. is that just for marketing purposes or does it really have any aero bits? Can you explain that? Sure, absolutely. I think for us, um, essentially the DNA of the company itself starts with a sort of aviation, avionics, aerospace background, right? A lot of the core members on our teams, <laughs> both on the mechanical engineering, on the structural engineering, on the electronic side, come from previous work experience in these companies, right? So they worked on, um, let's say, landing structures or, um, you know, aircraft-grade electronics and all of those principles that of design that are used typically in the aerospace industry have come into this vehicle and that's at a very fundamental level without even looking at the vehicle, right? Whether it's the battery management system, whether it's the, you know, motor controllers, whether when we talk about the uh, entire frame architecture and geometry and how it takes the impact and loads across the vehicle, that so, those sort of design principles have come in and now specifically looking at the vehicle right i'll just take one example right, right? this is sort of a fin that you see here and these are vents here so these are created to sort of redirect air towards the batteries and the mot motors right now one of the things that we have done again that goes back to sort of uh, aerospace principles is that anything that is there on the vehicle needs to be there not just for you know aesthetic purposes but for they must have some functional right. use as well and in our case multiple functional uses for example this is not just a fin it's not just to sort of redirect air it is also acting as a crash member right it is backed it's not a just a plastic part there's actually a metal backing here in the case of a fall right. it actually takes the impact and prevents anyone's sort of knees and you know your limbs from getting and the, the panels also and the panels right that's the other part right. also right and we've actually seen it functioning because we've had in our tests. So I'll ask specifically. Yes. This is an additional panel. It costs money, of course. Yes. Aesthetically, it's like, you know, very interesting. Right. But does this also have a role to play in the aero bits? Yes. Like, you know, does it help in any way? Yes. So you'll see here. So if you notice at the front of the vehicle, um, multiple vents, especially out here, and we sort of are able to channel air around this. So what typically happens is if you have a cylindrical structure here, there's sort of a turbulent airflow around it. So what we're able to do is with these surfaces, redirect air towards this vent right here, which then flows under the sort of uh, motor controller and above the BMS to sort so of drive a need up. for this. Yes, this is, yes, okay. there was a need. And obviously it does serve in of course, sort of- Of course, it does look nice, but yes. it does have a functional purpose as Absolutely. well as you're saying. Yes, yes. Now, that is one bit. And apart from that, all of these panels, as I understand, like, you know, they look very nice. It's right. one of the most beautiful motorcycles that I've seen right. and I'm, uh, very impressed with the quality also as I mentioned in my review also like you know if you put this product anywhere in the world Japan Australia America Germany this can very proudly uh, make you feel like you know a, a proud Indian and today being Republic Day I right. felt the need of saying that because this is truly an international product but this heavy paneling do you right. think this is going to create problems in the future because you know what we have seen in the past is that heavy paneling right. leads to panels coming off and right. you know the braces Right. Uh, the places right. uh, where you have joints like coming right. off, right. rattling starts. Right. So have you done anything actively to make sure that that right. doesn't happen? So one of the things that we've done even before getting to this point is that a lot of the work that happens with the vehicles, uh, we do what is called accelerated life testing, right? which is we put these vehicles through severe um, loads on both the front and the rear part right? and vibration over what is intended to cover like a lakh kilometers or two lakh kilometers right? and we get what would be the kind of uh, behavior at the end of that. And this is very different from actual road riding because you know, road riding also is done and road testing is done and we get feedback from there as well. And we see, okay, at the end of 2000 kilometers, is there any issue that we see? Is there any panel gaps that we see? Is there any vibration that we see, right? And we do that for every few thousand kilometers and we collect data and we are able to tell what would it be like X thousand kilometers later. And so that feedback is already incorporated okay. into this, right? So through so the design. The viewers can rest assured that this is not going to fall apart. Yes, yes. Now, I have ridden quite a few startup motorcycles, electric right. motorcycles, right. and I can say this with a lot of confidence that the finish on this motorcycle and the kind of quality that I see here is 
truly amazing like you know for Thank the you. first product from a company which is a startup it is amazing how did you get here like you know how did you manage to bring it to such finesse uh, in the first go see it's taken its time also from our end and we've been sort of uncompromising in our approach to sort of every single part of the vehicle right so while we work with partners vendors suppliers what we often notice is that we really have to push all of them to give, give us the kind of parts that we need on a world class motorcycle and that's that usually takes multiple attempts it takes multiple um, tries it takes hundreds of samples right and it takes you know quality checks from every stage from the point of view of the process quality on the supplier side all the way to you know incoming quality checks and how they all come together so it's just hard work at the end of the day it's not that it hasn't been done before in, in the same industry right so why wouldn't we be able to do it as a startup right so we had to figure this out and this this is what we have done about the battery a lot of people have this anxiety about battery like right. you know i just hope that this battery is not going to explode right so what right. do you have to say to people who probably have their like you know own apprehensions about the battery on this bike right so there's a significant bit of work that we've done um, on the battery packs and the bms itself right so there's uh, five levels of safety that we sort of refer to it as there is software protection there is electronic systems that are you know independently operating there are electrical mechanisms like fuses then there's the thermal protection and then there's the structural and mechanical protection right so each of these operate together in a coordinated manner for example i'll give you one example right like one is you when you talk about abuse and overcurrent or you know when we talk about short circuit kind of conditions you can have you can have software kick in you can have electronic circuits that kick in you can have electrical fuses that kick in each of those are operating at different time intervals like a fuse would operate if it's a slow blow fuse you know anywhere from like 500 to milliseconds to a second software protection is operating at microsecond level intervals right, right. and other electronic redundant mechanisms are operating in tens of milliseconds so all of these have to work together and that again involves a lot of testing validation which is what we have gone through to get to where we are today which is you know kind of what we sort of believe is a battery pack that is intended to last anywhere from 8 to 10 years in terms of you know an automotive use case which is that even after that period of time it will still have a minimum of 80% or 70% of you know its original rated capacity and from a safety point of view what i've mentioned at the end right mechanical safety structural safety so the entire battery pack is a large sort of aluminum structure right and that's intended again such that in the case of a massive crash also right you don't want the batteries to be a problem you already have a situation right there. of course right so there are members there which are intended to take the impact and the last things to deform are the electrical members of the cells inside the battery pack so that's kind of again the principles of you know aerospace engineering the crash part you know de dealing with impact and load and that's how the battery pack is built now as i see the motorcycle there are motorcycles and then there are motorcycles right there are batteries and there are batteries right so i see the difference like you know what meets the eye is absolutely beautiful it's very nicely done but inside the battery right how is it differentiated from the battery that you'll probably find on a more pedestrian kind of uh, an electric bike right. also the compaction that you have done right. like the energy density is much higher right right so how how does this battery the power source differentiate itself okay. from uh, you know the other lesser machines absolutely so so see i think if you were to use the exact same battery cells that we have in our battery pack in another battery pack wherever it is around the world you'll notice like two fundamentally different things one is the power output will be limited because you know and the reason for that is the thermal management capabilities so as long as there is an ability to maintain these cells within their you know nominal operating conditions and temperatures they are sort of well placed to operate there and they are well poised to give you that kind of power and energy right and that's something we have optimized for and that's something that you will rarely find on any other kind of vehicle the ones you're talking about and that actually is one of our things around the core differentiation in terms of how we've been able to you know passively air cool these batteries using just the air flow on the motorcycle and i don't think that's easy to replicate for anyone right that i can vouch for i honed it around the track and out in the open also and i didn't feel any heat right now a pain point for you as i understand is that the quality of components on this is generally very high so can you name the five components that gave you pain like you know it was a tough decision because it was expensive but still you like you know went ahead with it anyway see i think 
it's all visible here, right? From the swing arm itself, in terms of the powder coating on the swing arms, getting them up to the color and finish and, you know, um, the porosity of the aluminum, we had to measure that and make it's sure... It's an aluminum it swing arm by itself, so yes, that itself yeah. is like a huge cost, yes, from what I understand. Right, so the tooling for that. Then comes this large plastic panel here, right? Again, so if you see this color, uh, there are two other shades, the laser and the S-Strike. And even those vehicles, we wanted a particular shade of color and we wanted it because the way that the vehicle looks when the sunlight reflects off of it is different from the way that it looks in the shade. Right. Right. And we wanted that. So there's multiple layers of coloring within that. And to get it, you know, done in mm. India from the vendors that we meet, um, again, the expectation that we are setting is also very high. And the same applies across the vehicle um, from the quality of the material within this, the firmness of the seats, the <laughs> edges on the seats. Oh, I saw that, like, you know, it's, it's really amazing to see that coming from a startup uh, motorcycle maker. It's right. really high quality, top notch stuff there. Also, uh, the wheels, as I see, are like, you know, very high quality and the way they are finished, they are absolutely amazing, the, the way they look and feel, like, you know, even the styling on it, right. the highlights that you have. Yes, <laughs> yes. So, the no. wheels are like, uh, are they standardized uh, uh, alloys or are no, they No, no, like these are custom done for ultraviolet. Okay. This is again our custom design, which went through its own sort of analysis, um, you know, in terms of structural um, stability because what we try to do I think if I remember correctly this has been there on our vehicles even like a year and a half ago we reduce the weight by about two kilos from an equivalent comparable alloy and that's done to overall reduce the weight of the vehicle right so even to get that and then test it out um, has taken its while but that's sort of something we are very proud of actually so well, there's a lot to talk about this motorcycle, but what I want to wrap this conversation up with is that this electric motorcycle right here has the longest range, is the most powerful, is probably the best looking and it's Indian, you know, most of all it's an Indian motorcycle and that really fills my uh, chest with, you know, a lot of pride and today being Republic Day again, like I feel very proud that an Indian outfit that to a startup has built this motorcycle with a global outlook. They started from the scratch thinking globally, not just from India's perspective. And they have done a stellar job of it. All the very best. Thank and you. And I wish you guys all the success in the world. Make us proud. And I really hope that Ultraviolet becomes a name to be reckoned with worldwide. Thank you. Thank you.